Hey guys, this is a video on arenes. Arenes are basically those uh, organic compounds that seem to have uh, an aromatic ring of sorts. Uh, the most basic one is called benzene, and you probably have seen this structure in some questions in the AS level. This is the benzene structure, and benzene is a form of an arene. Arene are compounds that are aromatic. Now, what do I mean by aromatic? It helps to understand the structure of organic chemistry. Now, organic chemistry molecules can be divided in terms of saturated and unsaturated. And let's keep our di uh, uh, under qu discussion to hydrocarbons for a second. Now, hydrocarbons can be saturated or can be unsaturated. The saturated ones that we had seen in, o level, in AS level were alkanes and alkenes. And we also know that alkynes exist. Now, there's another form of unsaturated compounds called arenes. Now, arenes are different from the rest of the guys because they are aromatic. The name comes from aroma. They tend to have uh, basically a smell. But it's mainly because they have something called the benzene ring or a delocalized pi system. Now, those are aromatic compounds. So any compound that has that delocalized pi system is called an arene. The alkanes and the alkenes that you guys saw in O levels and AS level were called aliphatic compounds. Those are compounds that do not contain a benzene ring or any other related structure. So this class is all about the arene molecule. Uh, sorry, the benzene molecule and other derivatives of benzene. Now, what is benzene? Benzene is this fellow. Its formula is C6H6. All right. So we'll be looking at this guy right now. So let's look at the structure of benzene now. What is benzene? Benzene is C6H6, and this is how we represent benzene. The actual shape of the molecule looks something like this. What it has is it has six carbons in a hexagon, and each carbon is bonded to each other carbon, like this in a hexagon, just like cyclohexane would be. But the difference is that the uh, carbon only is bonded to one hydrogen here versus two. And each carbon is making three sigma bonds here. And three sigma bonds made, made by somebody is actually trigonal planar. Now, the shape that we have seen, the actual uh, structure of benzene that we know is actually like this. What you realize is that here, is that here that you notice all the six carbons are in a ring. The angles are all 120. And the reason why these are, angles are all, all 120 is because this carbon is sp2 hybridized. sp2. Now, if you remember an sp2 hybridized, that carbon has four orbitals, but only three undergo hybridization to make a trigonal planar structure. And the fourth one is unhybridized. Generally, we saw this when we did alkenes. And if you remember alkenes, mein, it was like this, trigonal planar. And the fourth orbital was unhybridized, and it combined itself in a pi bond overlap like this. Something similar has actually happened here. I'm going to scroll down to show you basically how these p orbitals overlap in benzene. But understand that this structure is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbons in a ring like this. And there is delocalized electrons above and below it. Now let's talk about how we get those. So I'm going to scroll down. Basically here is a layer of the benzene. Now here what helps is to imagine that this, this let's focus here for a second. So this uh, light orange Hexagon is your carbon atoms and I've not included the hydrogens But the carbon has you know has three bonds and has a fourth electron in the p orbital that is unhybridized Now generally speaking what would normally happen would be that you would imagine that these two p orbitals like this Would make a pi bond these two on top will make a pi bond and a pi bond And you probably have a double and a single and a double and a single pi bond system But that's not what happens. What really happens is that all of the p orbitals like here in each of the six carbon atoms actually join in this giant delocalization now this is similar to what happens in graphite also because you've got carbons in a hexagon ring the carbon has three electrons in sigma bonds and the fourth electron is in the unhybridized p orbital that combines in this overlap like this above and below resulting in the carbons being right here in this hexagon and this, uh, all these six uh, p orbitals combine in this giant p orbital called the delocalized pi bond system and it's above and below. 
let me scroll a bit down and maybe you can show it to you also yeah this would be an easier way to understand this is the same thing drawn here you got all the carbons with the hydrogen bonds and if you can zoom in let me just zoom in so it makes it a little easier let me zoom in here there you go so now now everybody can see this big yeah okay so you got the six carbons right here all with three sigma bonds each the fourth electron is in this p orbital the top layer overlaps like this which becomes right here the bottom layer overlaps like this and in total what happens is that these each of these orbitals had one electron so when they combine this and this there are total of select six electrons in this delocalized system now this is a flat planar structure so they have a plane of atoms and the plane above above the plane of the atoms you got a ring and below it and total there are six delocalized electrons in it you can imagine three here and three here or two here and four here any given time it's easier to imagine three and three but this is the six now this sorry let me move that up here so basically you got the six carbons here one two three four five six this ring represents these guys and obviously the hydrogens are not shown here now how do i know this is happening because i know it's overlapping like this and not basically doing what we expected here which is that they're not making double bonds and single bonds but they're making this giant delocalized bond how do i know that is because we've been able to measure the bond lengths now basically uh, either this could be a sigma bond or a sigma and a pi bond but a sigma bond would be a single bond and a sigma and a pi would be a double bond what we discovered in benzene is that these the carbon carbon bond strength is stronger than a single bond but weaker than a double bond or this bond is long shorter than a the um, single bond but lo longer than a double bond because longer would mean weaker how do i know that well here let me just bring that up for you guys so in benzene we've got that system going all right yeah right there so in this benzene structure what we have is that in an ethane the carbon carbon bond single bond is this large in an ethene it's much smaller but in a benzene a benzene bond is longer than a double bond but shorter than a single bond which means this bond all of these bonds are stronger than a single bond but weaker than a double bond and in some of the data booklet you will you will see the bond being quoted like this so to show you this is a benzene ring all right so that's proof that this is delocalized system and the thing with that is the reason why we're doing this is because you need to understand that it's this delocalized system that makes this very susceptible to attacks from electrophiles because there's a negative ring on top and below but another thing to note is that this ring is actually a very stable thing so even though they might attract a lot of electrophiles what happens ends up happening is that it takes a strong electrophile to break this chain and that's the fun part of benzene basically now before we go on to the reactions of benzene here i want to talk about some basic uh, derivatives of benzene now benzene was the guy with one ring here we've got if you have two rings bonded this is also an aromatic carbon this is called naphthalene with three benzene rings bonded to each other that's anthracene and these four ones are pyridine now you do not need to learn these names but as long as you see this you understand that they are derivatives of benzene so whatever holds true for benzene holds true for all these guys obviously here you got two rings of delocalized here you got three here you got four and uh, what we'll study is we'll study the reaction of benzene but it will be applied to all forms of it all right but before we do the reactions just for a second we got to do some naming conventions so basically what we need to understand is that that benzene can have things bonded to it so i'll bring that here right now so let's say to this benzene i attach a substituent now generally speaking benzene will un undergo uh, what you call it substitution reactions and here the x substituent is replaced a hydrogen that's here so this one sort of being c6 h6 this is c6 h5 and one of the h's is replaced by x now the x can be a substituent of various forms some popular substituents that we know of are right here these guys are let's talk about them you'll be seeing chlorine on a benzene ring nitro group on a benzene ring methyl group on a benzene ring the hydroxy group and amine this is a whole new functional group we'll study later but if you have chlorine on a benzene ring it's called chlorobenzene 
nitrine nitro groups on a benzene ring called nitrobenzene methyl methyl benzene now those are treated as substituents the oh is a functional group so it's treated like an alcohol but because it's an alcohol then a benzene in the derivative form is written as phenol or phenyl here also in phenol is the benzene with the oh group now we'll go to more functional groups later but what you need to understand is this and this is now we're doing some uh, naming conventions that when you have one or more than one hydrogen atom is substituted that's where the numbering comes in before that it doesn't like for example this is methyl benzene this needs no number because what you're doing is you're assuming that this carbon right here is carbon number one no two three four five six okay so now the numbering only comes in play when you have more than one substituent for example this beautiful little thing right here this fellow is called dichlorobenzene but now you got to put the positions in so what you do is you take any one of them as carbon number one but you want to go in such a way that you want to count as many as possible to give the lowest possible number so you'll go one two and three so this would be called one three dichlorobenzene because you want the lowest possible numbers now you might get something like this also now in this case you have methyl and chloro group but who gets the number one in this case because they're both substituents and if you remember as you gotta go alphabetic so methyl starts with m chloro starts with c the chloro wins out so that's carbon number one carbon number two carbon number three hence one chloro three methyl and not one methyl, three chloro. That would be wrong. Now, go on to something like this. Now, here we've got three substituents. Chlorine, chlorine, and bromine. Now, between chlorine and bromine, bromine is the alphabetically first, then chlorine. So, we give bromine number one. So, we can give one, two, three, four, five, six. So, one, three, six, or one, two, three, four, five. So, one, two, three, four, five is the smaller number possible. So, I'll go with that. So it'll be, because bromine uh, comes first, so one bromo, two, five dichloro, or two, five dichloro, one bromo benzene. Uh, you don't, you can swap the mm, position, sorry, you can swap the position of the actual words, but the numbering matters because that goes to the first in the alphabet, bromine here. Here, you got uh, CH3, CH3, and NH2. Now the problem is, this NH2 is actually a functional group. So which functional group? This is an amine. So basically, this becomes phenyl amine. But the phenyl also has substituents. Now, if the functional group is carbon number one, this becomes carbon number three and carbon number five. So the methyls are on carbons three and five. So there will be three, five dimethyl on the phenyl, which is an amine. So three, five diphenyl, dimethyl, phenyl, amine. Now, you won't be asked to name these guys much. You'll just be given the structures the shapes, sorry, the, the, the structures and the skeletal formulas. But I'm just giving you the names to get you guys custom to some of these. Now here what we have is another functional group because what you have now is the OH on a benzene ring. The OH on a benzene ring is called a phenol. And if that gets carbon number one numbering, and if you number them like this, you'll realize that you get two, four, six pechloro, phenol. Two, four, six trichloro, phenol. Now, this is all the substituents happening on the benzene ring. Now, on the other hand, if you have a functional group, but it's not on the benzene ring, okay, then it's given the name of basically uh, phenyl. Like, for example, here. Now, this fellow is uh, what you call it carboxylic acid, which is a CH2, so ethyl, so the ethanoic acid. But the ethyl part of the methyl part of the ethanoic acid has the benzene ring add on. So now this is not part of the main chain, but it's a substituent. And we'll use the word phenyl for this. So this is phenyl ethanoic acid. All right. So now that's the naming convention bit. Okay. But what we need to understand is that now I'm going to go on to chemical properties for this guy. So we've discussed some uh, structures and uh, naming of benzene and other arenes and substitute benzene rings. Now in the next, uh, I'll be talking about the electrophilic substitution mechanism for benzene all right watch out for that one